الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله We've talked about many times about the what Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah pointed out to the dangers or, or two ways really that the shaitan kind of comes to us and that great danger. And that really, those two ways, for those who are unaware, is through either shubahat or shahwat. Shubahat, meaning through doubt, through doubtful means, through ways of your aqidah, through your creed, uh, causing you to doubt your, your religion, your faith, challenging you with ideas, with foreign ideas or attacks on Islam and your deen. The second way is through shahwat, meaning by your desires those things which you are inclined towards as human beings women they like to look good that's their fitra so some of the women many of the women unfortunately in the world regardless of Muslim or not that they will they, they love to display their beauty that's a part of who they are and an expression of themselves and probably something even sh more inherent than we can imagine. Probably from their fitra, from the most base fitra of wanting to attract the opposite sex. This is what animals do and it is what uh, we see the shar shows us that this is really the, you know, that women do this. That's their, their, that's their inclination. They want to look beautiful and they want to show and display their beauty. And perhaps that is a primitive way and not so primitive of attracting a mate because men, we like beauty. We look at the beauty. We, that's a part of our desires. So our desires as men is we also have a fitra in which we want to appear strong. We want to appear masculine. We want to you know, show off our prowess as a man. And as men, we have a inclination, if you will, perhaps a primitive related inclination, and that is to, uh, to have women on our team, so to speak. That, that, that it's our inclination, that we are, that's who we are. We are men. And it's not a negative thing in the sense that that is a part of our fitra and that helps in the most primitive means to sustain humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it so that we're attracted to one another. In order so that way we would cohabitate, of course, in a lawful way. And in order to, to continue the propagation of humanity, you know, have children. So this is from our fitra and that inclination and those desires. However, Islamically, which is giving us that social and spiritual and that moral conduct helps us to rein that in. That it's not meant to be out of control and that you should just go and follow your desires, but yet there is a methodology for following your desires and that means it is according to the book in the Sunnah, the proper way that you that you uh, fulfill those desires. And this came about as far as a discussion of why I wanted to even mention anything about this, is someone asked the question about the doubt. So this means this is coming up with shubahat about women being controlled in Islam. 
And really, what I would say in general to the youth and others is not to involve yourself in those shubahat. This is the best way to cut that off, period. Because they are trying to cause, the people of disbelief and desires, try to cause you harm in your religion from both of those means, but especially through shubahat, through doubt. By causing you to doubt your religion or attacking things in the faith. Does Islam control women? Islam controls everybody. Islam controls everybody. Our premise is this. We're Muslim. And as some people translate in the most uh, rudimentary translation of the term Muslim, one who submits to the will of God. Okay, this is how we... The kind of what we were raised up as as far as in our Islam in the beginning years of our Islam of what it means to be a Muslim one who submits to the will of God one who submits to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're submitting to something and the will of something or someone then this is a type of servitude so as Muslims we're in the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not a free for all we cannot dress as we want. We cannot behave as we want. We cannot uh, speak as we want. We cannot conduct ourselves however we want. Nam, we have a free will. But if you want to be the Muslim, if you want to be a good Muslim, an obedient Muslim, then yeah, you will realize that Islam, as some of the scholars in contemporary times, especially from the Ahmed to Dawah, Say that Islam, al Islam lillahi tawhid wal inqiyad lahu bi ta'a wa khulus min shirkwa. That the, some of the scholars, especially in, in contemporary times, and of course we're talking about in the uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab and his successors, as far as the da'wah to tawhid and the, the revision, the revival of tawhid. They refer to as a definition for Islam that Islam means istislam to submit istislam to 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 seek to submit istislam lillah to submit to Allah be tawheed. So it's not just submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be tawheed. It's affirming that, meaning that, that it's only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what it means to be a Muslim. Islam lillah. Be tawheed. With tawheed, knowing, recognizing that he's the only one worthy of worship. His divine names and attributes. He is the Lord, the creator, the sustainer of the world, of everything. Islam lillah bi tawheed wal inqiyad lahu and adhering to his commands wal inqiyad lahu wa ta'a and obedience meaning obedience to what to his commandments tabarak wa ta'ala where do we find his commandments in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sunnah the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa khulus min shirk wa ahli and leaving off shirk Polytheism and the people of polytheism. So, if we look at that definition alone, we can simply, in a very general way, deal with that question. Yes, Islam calls women to, uh, Muslim women, to have a certain conduct, to abide by certain rules and regulations. Yes, wearing hijab is an obligation for a Muslim. Yes, doing other acts of obedience is an obligation upon the Muslim. So it's imperative that we know and we understand this. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive of our Yahweh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala Muhammad.